Welcome everybody, this is the Rotor E-Club of Silicon Valley, and we are excited every week to bring you cool stories from around the world, people who are engaged in all sorts of ways of, of making their communities better. Uh, we, we look for all kinds of things related to innovation, entrepreneurship, education, and how they, how they reflect possibilities for service to others. And so we, we have that kind of goal each week to inspire you, that, that at the end of the meeting, you know, you walk away and you think, wow, man, those were really interesting ideas, I, I really learned something valuable. And so, you know, as a reminder to all of our, our members, we're, we want you to be part of that process as well. Help us find these interesting people who have lots of cool things to, to share to the wider world. So uh, with that, I want you to know that, uh, that this starts with a little story. I was in, I was in Colombia uh, just a couple of months ago uh, to do a little program for teachers. And uh, my last day there, I thought, you know, how am I going to spend that day? And, and I found uh, on TripAdvisor the mention of this, this tour that, that the, re the reviews for this tour were just crazy good. It was like, wow, you know, this, is, this was so cool. It was amazing. It was wonderful to do this. And I thought, a graffiti tour? All right. You know, and so, so I went down and you know, found the place where, where I got started. And, uh, and I met Jay. And Jay uh, and I got to talking uh, on, along the tour. I had all kinds of questions, you know, trying not to pester him too much. Um, but, but the whole idea being that, wow, this is an amazing story. And, I, and I, at the end, I said, hey, I'm part of this, this Rotary Club, and we'd love to have you kind of tell us a little bit more about what's going on. And so, you know, and so Jay said, yeah, sure, that'd be great. Jay is, uh, is, is a guy who has, has spent his life in the United States and in Colombia. And, uh, and after doing a lot of education up in the U.S., uh, his parents were saying, hey, you know, you should, you should kind of get some experience with the family down in Colombia. And he said, okay, well, I'll go down and visit. And he stayed. Uh, and now uh, he is he is one of the the top tier people if uh, if the reviews are to be believed and I certainly believe him, uh, for for giving this tour and I am excited that he is presenting to us and with that I will hand it over Jay the, I'm absolutely jazzed to have you with us tell us a little bit about Bogota and and public art cool uh, thank you Russian and thank you guys for uh, checking us out uh, I introduce myself again my name is Jay. Most people can't pronounce it, so you guys can call me Jay, no problem. Uh, I've been back here in Columbia for 13 years now. Uh, I found great opportunities out here, uh, not just because, um, because of my English, uh, things like that, but my knowledge of different things. I've been able to uh, uh, entrepreneur a little bit. I've created a couple of different companies here. Uh, that's helped me out here uh, in the marketplace here. Uh, through that, uh, about three years ago, I've met up with uh, this guy who was part of the tour, uh, he's one of the tour guides on the tour. At that moment, he was setting up a gallery, an art gallery. You know, I had a little, had a little bit of business sense, so I decided to join him on his idea on the gallery. I learned the tour through that way, and I've been with the tour for the last three years. Uh, the tour originally started uh, with two uh, artists, uh, an Australian artist named Chris and, uh, and a Canadian artist uh, named OPEC. Uh, they had been traveling through different projects down here in South America and Colombia. Yeah, I met some of the guys that were already painting here from a really long time ago. Uh, they saw that there was a great opportunity to actually show what was happening here uh, in the city through the artwork. And that's how they started the, the graffiti tour. So kind of open up a space for, uh, for people who are coming into the city to check out what uh, the stories behind the walls, things like that. Uh, so it just so happens that in Bogota, uh, tourism started to, uh, to flourish at that time as well. Uh, tourism is really new to Bogota, really new to Colombia in the last five years, really it's been picking up. Uh, the reason why is because Colombia has become a safer place. It's kind of an undiscovered area where people had not come out here before and will now are discovering it. Uh, when you come out here, it's beautiful, something that I saw when I came out here. So there's different things that really attract the tourism, uh, the tourism here. Uh, within the last, uh, within the last uh, seven years, the tour has run. Uh, the tour right now uh, is one of the top attractions here uh, in Bogota. Uh, as uh, Russian said uh, uh, on TripAdvisor, uh, we actually... Last year, we finally reached the number one spot of things to do here in the city. So that's uh, really interesting as well. Uh, people come out here. It's, it's a different way to see the city. Uh, to see the city. Uh, some people, some of my museum friends don't like when I say this, but uh, when you go out to the museum, you see all the really beautiful stuff, all the historical stuff. Uh, when you see the graffiti, not only are you seeing really beautiful walls, we are also seeing the, uh, the political side of the graffiti. You're also seeing the critique that the graffiti also uh, leaves all around the city. Uh, it's not history. It's current day politics, current day social uh, uh, situations that are happening here that are affecting everybody in the community here. So it's a different way to see the city. I kind of tell people 
once you know a little bit about graffiti and you're able to go to whatever city and whatever's happening in that city, it's on the walls. It'll, the walls talk. Uh, so in the last couple of years, uh, we've been doing this. Uh, this is uh, started one day a week, uh, now to now. We do it twice a day. Uh, peak season, which is usually in December, we do it three times a day to kind of uh, handle all the groups that we're getting. Uh, it's really something that's really taken off from a really small idea. Uh, right now we're a group of uh, six people. Uh, Chris uh, still is one of the owners of the tour. Uh, Chris is back in Australia where he's from, uh, right now in charge of the tour while he's gone. Uh, and with this, we have uh, all types of different ideas. Uh, we're gonna be setting up a space, uh, gallery space for artists to be able to show off their work. A lot of these artists are top artists that have been doing expos around the world. Uh, the brands now, big name brands are working with them. Uh, two of the guys recently just did a, a little event with Nike. Uh, that's pretty big time. Uh, so it's gonna a little bit big here. Uh, to show you a little bit of how big the culture is here, uh, I wanna show you a couple of different walls that we have all around both that. Uh, most people are really surprised by the things that are happening here. Uh, one of the first walls, uh, you see this? This is actually something that's called a macro mural. Uh, these are 220 houses that are all painted with one design so that you can see it from a certain point far away. Uh, this is a neighborhood that uh, was run down with crime, run down with uh, uh, different situations, a lot of poverty in these areas. We have a lot of displaced people in Colombia because of the violence that's always happened here. So fortunately, some of these farmers, they have to leave uh, their, their territory to come into the big cities. They don't know how to read, they don't know how to write. So they create these areas on the borders of, of the city where they can live. And some of these areas become really bad. This whole neighborhood was changed just because those houses were painted. Uh, the, the foundation that actually um, uh, took care of this project, uh, they not only painted the walls, they gave workshops to the people there. They taught them how to do construction. They, with some of the women, they taught them how to do uh, 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 beauty stuff, beauty salon stuff, stuff, and they certified them so they can go out and actually get jobs now. So the, the graffiti here is not only just to paint. Uh, I kind of say here in South America, we don't just paint just to paint. We, leave, we paint to leave a message. We, leave, uh, we paint to recuperate areas. We paint to uh, uh, affect communities in a positive uh, way. Uh, so it's, it's, it's completely different than what you expect a, a, a town full of graffiti. Uh, we have a lot of international artists that are coming out here to paint. Uh, this piece right here is from a Mexican artist that's known around the world uh, named Farid. Uh, that's one of the main streets going into one of the tunnels. So you can tell a little bit of how big that mural is. Uh, this is one of the top crews here uh, on Sunday. Uh, people go out on, the, on a bicycle route that runs all through the city. This is one of the main areas where people go to, on their bikes. Uh, this is a French artist as well, uh, known for his realism. Uh, so we have all types of things happening here in, in, in the city. It's not just the taggings on the walls. It's not just the, the things that you can't read. Uh, these artists, some of these artists have uh, been here painting the city for more than 20 years. Uh, they're top artists uh, that do walls like that. That's a 12-story mural that was just painted. Um, so it really helps out the community here. really helps out well, how the people respond uh, to the artists when they're painting. Uh, it's kind of changed their idea of what a graffiti artist is. Um, a lot of times now, uh, I, I saw one of the projects that we're doing, one of the kids passed by and just told his dad, hey dad, look, that's graffiti, right? That's not illegal, right? That's not a crime. A little kid, probably 10 years old. So to have a new generation of people thinking that way, it's, it's, it's great because graffiti is not something new. Graffiti is a culture that evolved from the hip hop culture almost 40 years ago. Uh, you go around the world, there's graffiti artists that are recognized around the world. Uh, one of the top selling pieces uh, in, in uh, American pieces that were ever sold was Basquiat, uh, Bas John, uh, Michel Basquiat, which was basically a graffiti artist discovered by Warhol. Uh, so that's one of the top American pieces that were ever sold in the world. It holds the record still. So it's something different. It's something that's evolved. It's something that's become this. Uh, huge walls that are painted all over the city. Smaller projects that are painted in uh, areas. Uh, within the last couple of years, we've gotten we've gotten to see that we're able to actually uh, help out a little bit as well, not just doing a tour, uh, but also just uh, creating projects on our own. Uh, we've been able to uh, really been able to help out the community here. Uh, we uh, basically designate 15% um, of all the donations that we make on the tour. The tour is completely free. You can give whatever you want on the tour. And 15% of that goes to projects that we're doing all over the city. Uh, basically, these are projects, these are our projects. Uh, we have a project called Bogota Graffiti and Friends. We have a lot of international artists that are contacting us. They want to paint out here. They know the scene is really big out here. 
uh, we're able to find them walls like this. This was uh, a guy from Argentina, a guy from Guatemala, a guy from Uruguay, and a guy from Mexico painted this wall together. Uh, this is a, a girl from Brooklyn, New York, painted with some of the artists here. It's really cool to see this exchange between artists because it's not just it's not just uh, the the language. It's also sitting down having lunch. The international artists discovering the Colombian food, uh, different techniques that they interchange between each other. So it's a little bit different. Uh, this was a guy from Holland. Uh, he was born here in Bogota, but he was adopted when he was four months old and lived in Holland his whole life. Oddly enough, he became a graffiti artist and he contacted us, one, to be able to paint out here, and we tried to help him out to find the orphanage where he was adopted. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore. But, you know, he got a really good sense of what Colombia was, where he was born. So uh, this is a little bit of what we like to do with the, with the art here is not just to paint really beautiful stuff, it's to paint a little bit of the memory. Uh, things that have happened here, cultures that existed here for a living long time. Uh, this is a, a piece we did in uh, the National Museum of Bogota. Uh, we painted with two girls out there. Uh, the, that side of the scene is really uh, tough sometimes for female artists to be able to jump into this kind of work. So we work with a lot of female artists on these projects. Uh, this is a project called Pint My Carrosa or Pint My Little Cart. Around the world, this project exists. It's from a Brazilian artist and he highlights what the recyclers do by painting their little carts. This really makes a difference. People start to see a little bit of what they do. Uh, they start to recycle or separate their, their garbage before they hand it over. Or they'll even go out and give these guys lunch or give them something. So it uh, really affects that their cart is actually painted. So uh, these are some of the projects that we do. Uh, kind of wrap it up a little bit. Um, the, chain, the, same, the scene really changed here a couple of years ago. Uh, seven years ago, there was a 16-year-old artist that was murdered. Uh, he was murdered by the police. Uh, unfortunately, it was kind of a little bit of a cover-up. Uh, the police decided that they wanted to plant a gun on the 16-year-old's body. Uh, it was all discovered in court. Uh, the father, the parents, are really fighting to make sure that this does not happen to any of the graffiti artists here again. Uh, so uh, uh, from 2013, this is the bridge that's painted in his memory every year. Uh, since 2013, there's been a local support in Bogota for artists, for projects like this. Artists can now go into the city uh, projects, get uh, scholarships to paint really huge projects like this. In December is when these really huge walls are all painted. Uh, we help, we've been helping out the parents. We feel their fight is really important for the scene here. We've been helping them out. In the last year, we're trying to help to push a, a national graffiti law. Basically, all the benefits that the artists get here should be around Colombia. Uh, Cali, Medellin, there's a huge scene in these really big cities. We want to be able to help out other artists from around the world as well. So. Uh, from around all Colombia as well. Uh, so this is something we do. Uh, it seems like we, we, we're really taking off with these projects. It really helps the community out here. Uh, the, the, our, our Facebook, our Instagram also serves as a way to kind of um, uh, uh, send out all these information to all the culture that's here. Uh, it's estimated that there's more than 8,000 graffiti artists here in the city. And obviously there's a lot of fans, a lot of people like this stuff. Uh, these guys are creating events now t-shirts stamping events they're independent artists that move their uh their their companies so we give them spaces we try to set up fairs where these guys can show off their work stuff like that uh through our websites through our social networks we're able to really distribute that a lot of people really uh follow us uh, we have more than 50,000 followers on facebook and that really helps out the culture here because you see these guys these kids now they have a place to go on friday and saturday nights they have a really cool expo to go see at uh, it's really cool to go out to some of these galleries really high priced galleries where you see these really affluent people with, you know, uh, with their glass of wine in their hand and then see some of these graffiti kids from the hood rubbing elbows with them and appreciating the artwork. So it's really spaces that have been creating here. Uh, and I give credit to the artists that have been here for about 20, 30 years. The culture here is really strong. Uh, we've been classified as one of the top 10 cities for graffiti art around the world. So just to leave you with that. Awesome, Jay. That, that is so cool. Uh, that there's, I, I've got a list of about 10 questions I'm ready for, uh, but I want to also introduce uh, who else we have on the call. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Rushton. I, uh, was the, uh, I was the president of the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley from its start in January of 2015 through June of 2016. Uh, I'm very proud of our little club and our ability to share stories with folks around the world. Uh, I am very happy also to in, uh, introduce one of our Canadians, uh, Roger Plested in Kamloops, British Columbia. And uh, Roger, I want to, before I kind of get too far in, in, into my own questions, I want to give you a chance to jump in because because I, I just got, I got so many, so many thoughts to share on this. So Roger, why don't you jump in first on this? 
Yes, I um, let me explain my involvement on in this type of program before. Uh, there are two towns in British Columbia that have similar type of programs and who are very successful in uh, becoming tourist attractions for the same type of thing. The second thing is, is that um, in the North Shore, we uh, have a businessmen's association and in that association, we tried to start a program that was very similar to yours to be able to attract people to the North Shore for a walk that they could go on and uh, see all the murals on all the walls. Um, the first thing that we noticed was that the artists like to get paid. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and so what we had done is we had taken and um, um, provided through our association funds to do these. And we got a number of them uh, put on the various different walls. And everything was trucking very nicely until uh, the building sold and the new owners. Uh, one took down the building totally. <laughs> and another decided to change the face of the building of the side, which took out the mural. Now, uh, the first question I have for you is, how do you arrange for your artist to be paid? And how do you secure the uh, the interest of your association on the property that is owned by other people. Okay, all right. Maybe to clear something a little bit up, a lot of these walls that are on the tour are walls that the artists are getting on their own. They're walls that they're uh, negotiating with the property owners, things like that. So we just do a general uh, tour around the Candelaria area, which is the historical area. Because that way we can associate a little bit of the historical stuff of Bogota into some of the graffiti. So a lot of the walls that are on the tour, we actually haven't paid for. A lot of them are walls that are illegal, uh, that these guys have gotten, uh, you know, because the graffiti comes from a little bit from that. Uh, and walls that they've uh, negotiated uh, with the property owners as well. When we do projects, we do projects uh, that have a social contact behind them. We actually like to not work in the Canelaria. To, for people don't say that we're just painting walls for our tour. Uh, we work outside of the city. Uh, we work in the rural areas. We work with the uh, different groups of communities. Uh, there's a lot of indigenous communities that are out here that need some help. Uh, there's a lot of low income areas that because of the crime, because of the lack of opportunities, uh, we, they need something to do in their neighborhoods, things like that. So when we do that, we try to actually first secure the, pro uh, the permissions from the property owner. That's the only law that really exists here. Uh, in Bogota. Once you have permission from the property owner, the property owner can do whatever they want with those walls. So we go out there, we talk uh, out there. Once we have a clear idea of what the project is, uh, we write out uh, projects, uh, project plans, and we have a couple of contacts here. Being one of the top tourism companies here in, in, in the city, we have a way to contact some of the big name uh, paint companies that are out here. We have a lot of sponsorship through them. Uh, and with the 15% that we designate every, uh, every day, every month, uh, we pay the artists with that amount as well. Uh, obviously, sometimes there's a social projects where we don't get enough funds, but since we have a good working uh, relationship with a lot of artists, a lot of artists are willing to volunteer their time and do some projects free, as long as they actually have the paint. Uh, we like to make sure that the artists have at least water and food while they're there, lunch is taken care of. A lot of times, it's the own community. Uh, it becomes a big project because we just say, okay, well, we're painting all you guys as well. Let's help us out with lunch. We'll do a big pot in the middle of the street and everybody will have lunch so community will come out a lot that works a lot as well because they're now seeing neighbors that they never or they saw every day but then never meeting so now this has become a community project where everybody feels responsible for these projects and that helps to actually change the attitude of the whole of the whole uh, uh neighborhood and that's really what you see starting to change things and stuff like that uh we also like to think as graffiti artists a little bit uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I grew up in New York in the 1980s. So I kind of grew up as a hip hop kid, really 
learn a little bit of the graffiti on my own. I never thought I was going to work in graffiti before, but I kind of get what these guys are coming from. Uh, and graffiti's, it could last, your walk can last 10 years or it can last 10 minutes. So it's something that, you know, as an artist, uh, when you're out there painting, you know that the next day it could be tagged. Uh, one of the local uh, soccer fans that's kind of a, in a little gang, soccer gang, he'll come out and put his soccer team right on your pretty wall. So it's something that happens. It's something that we have to learn here. Uh, uh, I would tell, I always tell people that if you come back to Bogota in a year's time, the tour changes about 80%. 80% of the tour completely changes. The graffiti is always changing. There's walls being erased. Unfortunately, right now we have a situation uh, w with the historical part because it's so historical. A lot of those buildings are protected as patrimony, and the city doesn't want some of these walls on these buildings. But even the city starts to erase some of the walls too. But that's something that we have to deal with. We know that when you're painting on the street, that's part of the part of the part of the idea. One more question: Do you get the artists to sign off on the copy their uh, copyrights? Uh, we've been telling artists, uh, that's a really cool idea. Oh, we don't take advantage of the artist's artwork at all. Uh, we tell artists, we actually, I'm starting to do this on my own. Uh, there's a way to uh, copyright any idea here in Bogota through a website that the, uh, that the city has. Uh, and we're giving them the link directly every time and telling them the process. Look, it's easy. Just take a picture of your wall, fill out this form, and that's it. It's yours. That way nobody can, can use it. Uh, we try to help uh, these kids out. Uh, part of this law that we're doing is for the kids to know their their rights as artists. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I hate to say it, but you know, unfortunately here in Colombia, the corruption here within the police department is really bad. This case that I was speaking to you guys about proves it. So we wanna make sure that that doesn't happen again. So we're educating these kids on their rights. We're giving them their, the, the code and the law, the number of the law that they have to follow in case they find themselves stuck in the situation. Uh, through the context that we have with the parents of the 16 year old that was murdered, uh, we're now starting to take uh, some of these cases uh, that are uh, police brutality cases. We know that if the kid goes out and files this police report here, it's probably not going to go anywhere. Uh, but these cases are now being filtered through us, uh, through the parents, and we're going directly to the top tier uh, police officers to make sure that these cases get solved, make sure these kids get protection a lot of times. And so we try to inform the kids as much as we can so that they can become a little bit better so that they know how to set up businesses and stuff like that. So try to give them a little push. Good stuff. Now, w one of the things that struck me about the tour wh when I was on it uh, was, was this, this tendency that you, that you sent, you see in so much of the art to speak to community and, and especially uh, indigenous communities that you mentioned it a few moments ago. Uh, so, you know, you were talking about how often in, in the, uh, the, the, the pictures of the different people that appear in this, there, there are different things that, that indicate uh, the different groups that, that, uh, that the people that are, that, are, that are pictured may be a part of in some way. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, here in South America, really, uh, we're in more contact with our indigenous communities. And I think the reason why is because we still see them on the streets. Uh, we still see their uh, native wear. We still see, we have, still have that contact. Just here alone in Colombia, there's still 65 indigenous languages that are spoken here, still. So we still have that influence. Uh, and a lot of times in South America, and it ha it's happening in Bogota with the protection of these really old houses, uh, these houses are colonial houses, meaning that Colombia was a colony of Spain. And these are Spanish architecture and it's being protected, but we're not protecting our indigenous communities. Uh, with this uh, crime happening in these areas, with exploitation of resources that we have, and that's happening a lot here, such as oil, coal, we have a lot of exploitation. Uh, these families of indigenous communities have to come into the cities now. When they come out here, the only thing that they can really do is what they know how to do it, and that's artisan stuff, beadwork, stuff like that. So sometimes they become homeless because they're not able to survive in a big city environment. Uh, so it's really important to keep that memory alive uh, through the artwork, uh, especially since Bogota is one of the main centers of the Muisca culture, which is one of the, our indigenous communities. Uh, basically, on, along the tour, we stopped at uh, one of the points, which is the birth of Bogota. And that point was one of the most important spots for the leader of these indigenous communities that existed more than a thousand years ago. So one of the pictures that I showed you guys and I talked about the memory is right there, right spot in that area where that was. So it's, in order to, 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 to say, okay, yes, this is important. Bogota is important because it was a, a Spanish colonial town and it's more than 500 years old. But before that, there were people that were living here. 
And that's important because we still see, see that community here. So in South America, really, you still have that. You still have that. Uh, that also comes a little bit from the Mexican uh, muralism, uh, Latino muralism that evolved from Mexico really brings out that identity. And so that really helps. It's, it's all throughout South America, you can see that. You, you talk about muralism, and I remember from the tour, you also indicating that like there, there are these differences, right? There, there's, there's tagging, there's, there's, uh, there, there's letter work, you know, there, there's murals. And, and so, so can, can you kind of break that down for, for the people who are going to watch this and, uh, and talk about kind of where the focus is for you? Sure. Uh, well, we always think when we hear the word graffiti, we always think, oh yeah, New York, uh, the tag and the writing on the walls and stuff like that. But remember that humans have been writing on walls ever since we were humans. Uh, just an hour and a half away from Bogota, we have caves that were painted by indigenous communities 2,000, 3,000 years ago. So all communities have always painted. This is nothing new. We started to call it graffiti because graffiti came out of the word uh, garavito, garavato, I'm sorry, which is an Italian word for something ugly that's been written on a wall. It could be something ugly in protests as well. That's where the word comes from. So in the 1970s, when a lot of areas in New York basically were run down, uh, areas like Brooklyn, the Bronx, uh, these people had no option. Uh, I kind of say that sometimes graffiti and sometimes the writing on the wall is the only, uh, is, is the voice for the people who don't have a voice. If you don't have a voice politically, if you don't have a voice socially because of your situation, you can't really complain about what's happening to you because nobody's listening to you. Uh, I bet you if you go out and paint a wall that's really big, a really big direct message, people are going to start noticing what's happening. So it came from that a little bit. Uh, it came from that. It came from a lot of times these kids happens here. When you turn 18, you have no shot to go to college. So guess what? Your life hits. You have to go get a job, things like that. So it comes out of lack of opportunity. These kids need something to do. Uh, a lot of times, uh, well, graffiti came from that, and it came from the – I'm going to write my name or I'm going to write my nickname. My friends call me to tell people I'm here. And then once the first few guys in New York start to see that that was working and that they were known around the city, it started to evolve a little bit more. It started to get into the trains. Why the trains? Because the trains went all over the city. So if you're able to paint a train and people saw your name, not, well, you only weren't seen in your hometown. You were seen in Brooklyn. You were seen in the Bronx. You were seen in Manhattan. So it starts to evolve in that. Then what came next was the lettering. And that's when the, the little small tags just start to evolve into all types of different lettering, things like that. And then from that, guys really had talent. A lot of these guys really had talent. And one day they said, well, I'm tired of writing, of just painting letters. Let me try to paint a face. Let me try to paint something with a message. And so it's evolved a little bit from that. Obviously, a lot of things have affected graffiti culture. As I mentioned, Mexican muralism was really important. Uh, the Mexican communities, indigenous communities, and even present day communities, they always paint their walls. It's something that's really important. Uh, that's evolved a lot. It's influenced the whole South American graffiti scene. Uh, that's a really big factor that's really changed the, the aesthetic here. Uh, so it's evolved to really big things. Uh, and it's changed. Um, graffiti's changed, as I mentioned. We could take the example of Five Points in New York. Uh, the artists there were just awarded $6.7 million for their work being erased uh, by a local developer. Uh, so that's, it's, it's, it's an important thing, a phenomenon that's happening in all major cities. It's gonna happen. One way or another it's gonna happen. When you give these spaces to these artists, they have an opportunity to go out and actually create something and learn how to create something better. A lot of times people are like, I don't understand that tagging. Why are everybody tagging? Because they don't have any other space to go and learn how to do this. A lot of these guys are learning this on the streets and that's the only way. They're not going to universities, they're not going to these top art schools, they're learning on the streets and they're becoming international artists just because spaces are not open for these guys to express themselves. It, it was really interesting. I was gonna say, it was just really interesting on the tour. By, by the end of it, we were able to identify some of, the, some of the artists you were talking about, right? We were like, oh, yeah, that's that guy who, right? You know, that kind of thing. Exactly, and, uh, exactly. Yeah, you start to see guys, that's the idea. To start to see guys all over the streets, you know who's going out every night, you know who's uh, getting the walls, you know who's getting the big name projects from the city too. So it's, it's cool. And it gives these guys an identity where they can actually live off their work. Yeah. Well, you know, so much of our focus, you know, you know has to do with things like you know, how do you help a community? How do you build a community? And so, you know, I, I, I was when you showed those those pictures of the, the 220 houses, I think you said, yeah. you know, and, and how that all came together and how that became a part of, you know, of actually pulling that that area out of some of the, of the problems that they'd had. I was thinking to myself, why did I get to see that? You know, like, <laughs> I would have totally gotten to take pictures of that. 
Yeah, those are a little bit on the outskirts of the city. Uh, that's the first one that was done by the city. Uh, this is done by one of the big name companies here. They have an organization called Orbitz. Uh, and as I mentioned, they like to not just go in there and paint. They like to certify the people to do uh, different kinds of skill sets, uh, whatever it takes, you know. So they go in there and they make sure that it's not just going to paint. This is the first one that was done. That's 220 houses. Uh, the second one was 550 houses. Uh, and the one they're working on right now is more than 700 houses. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so um, I thought that was really filling with color. Cool. Well, I, I know Roger and I are going to keep asking you questions once we stop the recording, but, but I have about reached that point. So I should, I should wind things down for, uh, okay. for all you unlucky people who are merely watching the recording and not getting to engage in the conversation like we are after, afterwards. Um, but, but thank you so much for being a part of uh, the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley this week. We love having people come and, and share these, these stories that, that you know, we get a chance to, to hear and connect with these people doing all of these interesting things. And we hope you'll come back. And let us know you were here. Just down the page a bit, you're going to see a place where you can say, that's my name, my email address. If you put your email address in right and you're a Rotarian, you know, like making up a mess, you'll get an email that you can pass along to your club secretary so that you can get that covered that way. Uh, additionally, down at the bottom, there is a, a discussion section called Discuss, D-I-S-Q-U-S, and, and we want you to leave messages for us. What did you think when you, when you were kind of going through this program and seeing these pictures? What did you think about other parts of the meeting? Let us know. Uh, and so that we can engage in, in kind of conversation with you on that in that space. Uh, as we do every week, we like to leave the last word to our presenter. And so, Jay, first of all, thank you again so much for, for taking the time uh, to, to be, part, uh, be part of our little effort to share stories around the world. Uh, and and I'm, I would love for you to kind of give that message that you would like everybody to walk away with as we finish up. Cool. Uh, thank you guys for checking us out. And thank you, Russian, for allowing us to be part of this program. Uh, just as a way to look out on the street, always, uh, I'm pretty sure if you guys walk by the street plenty of times, there's artwork everywhere. Just pay a little bit of attention, pay a little bit of what's going on, and you'll find out what the community really means. Uh, we like for you guys to come out here in Bogota. If you ever happen to be here, come check out the tour. You can check us out at bogotagraffiti.com. Uh, you can check out what we're doing. Uh, all our projects, everything we do are on our Facebook, our Instagram. Also, Bogota Graffiti as well. Uh, check out what the process we're doing and things that we're doing. Uh, we're getting into a little bit bigger things this year. The city's contacted us for a lot of really big projects. So we hope this keeps growing and we hope it opens up some spaces for the artists to be able to express themselves. Very cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next week.